Today's story is about a series of incidents that occurred in Saga Prefecture, Japan, from 1975 to 1989, in the towns of Kitagata, Shiroishi, Kitashigayasu, and Takeo. This incident involved the murders of seven women of various ages, except for one, who went missing on Wednesdays, earning the moniker, Wednesday Strangler. On August 27, 1975, Wednesday, 12-year-old middle school student Tomiko Yamasaki from Kitagata, Japan, became the first victim. According to those who knew Tomiko, she used to go to her mother's restaurant after school to study, but that night, she was alone at home. When her family arrived home in the evening, they found Tomiko missing. The TV was on, and her shoes were near the front door, but there was no trace of her. A neighbor reported seeing a man pushing Tomiko into a car, but the police couldn't find her. Several years after Tomiko's disappearance, a similar incident occurred. On April 12, 1980, Saturday, Ritsuko Hayakutake from Shiroishi disappeared in a similar manner to Tomiko. Ritsuko was the second of four siblings. On the day she disappeared, her mother fell ill, so the family took her to the hospital, leaving Ritsuko alone at home. When her family returned, she was gone. Ritsuko had attempted suicide twice before and had planned to try again when she turned 20. Since she disappeared a day after turning 20, police and family considered her survival unlikely, especially after finding entries in her diary expressing despair. For days after Ritsuko disappeared, a letter was delivered to the house of Tomiko, who was the first to go missing. Tomiko's father received a letter with just three sentences, one containing private information and the other stating, your daughter won't come back. You suffer too. There was no sender on the envelope, but the timing of the letter seemed connected to both incidents. Tomiko's father, planning to appear on a TV program to find the missing, received threatening calls telling him not to go. As there were no signs of robbery or kidnapping in both cases, the police suspected someone known to both women. About two months after Ritsuko's disappearance on June 24, 1980, a child found a bundle of red hair near the school's purification tank, about three miles from her home in Shiroishi. The school principal reported it to the police, who found a syringe and stockings inside the tank, along with Ritsuko's body. Strangely, on July 27 of the same year, while cleaning another purification tank at the same school but in a different direction, the principal discovered many stones piled inside and alerted the police again. During the investigation, police found Tomiko's remains in the tank. Both victims were found as skeletal remains in the purification tank, making it impossible to determine the cause of death. One year later, on Wednesday, October 7, 1981, another missing person report was received in Shiroishi. Chizuko Ikigami, a 27-year-old female employee returning home from a nearby factory, went missing in the evening. Chizuko was grocery shopping at the market around 5.30 p.m. after finishing work. A passerby witnessed her talking to a suspicious man in his 30s in a car while she was at the market. Afterward, she disappeared. Two weeks later, on October 21st, Chizuko's body was found about 25 miles away from the last sighting point, with an electric cord wrapped around her neck. A few months later, on Wednesday, February 17, 1982, another incident occurred. Kumi Nishimura, an 11-year-old elementary school student from Kitagata, went missing on her way home from school. Kumi was walking with friends in the same direction as her home, but they parted ways at a midpoint, and she continued alone towards her house. Her parents became worried when she didn't return home by 8.40 p.m. and reported her missing. A search team of 150 people looked for her overnight, but her body was found the next morning at 11.30 a.m. in an orange grove. She was found with her shirt intact and carrying her bag, but the rest of her clothes were missing. A stocking was wrapped around her neck, indicating strangulation. Before the fourth victim, Kumi, went missing, there was a report of a suspicious man in a white car. A witness at a nearby bus stop saw a man in his 30s to 40s engaging with three elementary school students, showing them photos of the popular group Pink Lady and offering to show more. The witness mentioned the car's license plate as Fukuoka 6950 and described the man wearing a t-shirt and blue pants. Police believe this was the work of the same perpetrator due to similar characteristics in the crime scenes. 
The last three victims were all found near a prominent hill in Kitagata. On Wednesday, July 8, 1987, Sumiko Fujais, a 48-year-old restaurant employee, went missing. She spent about an hour drinking with friends that evening before preparing to go home. Her house was in the opposite direction from her friends' houses, and she disappeared while walking alone towards her home, which was less than 0.6 miles away. Then, on Wednesday, December 7, 1988, 50-year-old housewife Kiyomi Nakajima also went missing. She was heading to a nearby sports center for volleyball practice. She usually went with one of her friends, but that day her friend couldn't make it, so she went alone. Witnesses saw her talking to an unidentified woman in a car on the day she disappeared, but the woman's identity remains unknown. Shortly after her disappearance, police installed a recording device on her home phone and successfully recorded a call from a middle-aged man. According to a journalist who released the call transcript in 2016, during the call, a man said to Kiyomi's husband, looks like you're looking for your wife, and when her husband asked where she was, the caller said, where there is rice. And hung up. Two weeks later, Tatsuyo Yoshino, a 37-year-old company employee, went missing. At 7 p.m. that evening, she was having dinner at home with her son and her mother when she received a call. She seemed nervous during the call, and afterward, she told her mother she needed to give a ride to a friend, but strangely, she told her son she was going out to dinner with a friend. Her car was found in a bowling alley parking lot after her disappearance. On January 27, near a mountain in Kitagata, a couple picking flowers discovered three bodies around 5 p.m. near a cliff. The victim's personal belongings were found within a two-mile radius of the scene. Autopsies revealed all victims were strangled to death. Cash and other belongings found with the victim suggested the motive was not robbery. In 1981, a 29-year-old man named Yu was initially suspected and arrested in March for the first two crimes. He had promised to marry Ritsuko Hayakutake, the second victim, but her family didn't approve. Suspicion grew as Yu was mentioned in Ritsuko's diary just before her disappearance, and he was also a regular customer at Tomiko Yamasaki's mother's restaurant, where Tomiko had gone missing. He had a previous arrest for assaulting a colleague, but after interviews with many acquaintances yielded insufficient evidence, he was acquitted due to lack of substantial information linking him to the crimes. In 1989, M, a 26-year-old man, was investigated and found to be the ex-boyfriend of the last victim, Tatsuyo Yoshino. However, he denied the crimes, claiming his confession was coerced during police interrogation. The case remained unsolved for years, and due to the statute of limitations, the first victim, Tomiko Yamasaki's case, expired in July 2002. However, police pursued charging M just six hours before the statute of limitations expired on July 7, 2002, and the trial began on October 22, 2002. Prosecutors claimed that M met Tatsuyo Yoshino on the night she went missing, and urine found in his car matched M's DNA, with his saliva found on Tatsuyo's body. However, after years of legal battles, M was acquitted on April 10, 2005, due to lack of evidence and allegations of coerced confession during police interrogation. This case led to the revision of Japan's statute of limitations a few years later. While the first four cases are expired in terms of the statute of limitations, the remaining three cases are still valid to this day. Some argue that due to inconsistencies in the crimes, each case should be viewed individually.